Hey, welcome back to the channel. Let's get right into today's devotional. We're at Lamentations chapter 3, verses 37 to 39. Who is he who speaks and it comes to pass when the Lord has not commanded it? Is it not from the mouth of the Most High that woe and well-being proceed? Why should a living man complain, a man, for the punishment of his sins? So who is in control of providence but God? That's really the first line here. Who is he who speaks and it comes to pass as the Lord not commanded it? God is in ultimate control. I mean, he doesn't cause every detail to pass, but he intervenes according to his all-knowing wisdom, and he does modify this and tweak that so that things work out according to his will. But it's not like he tweaks everything. It's not like the whole thing is just a play and he's pulling every single string. Most of this stuff is is running because, because where we have free will, all these beings, you and I and other people, all with free will, the, the Lord doesn't intervene that much, but he does intervene for something. So he is in ultimate control of providence, but providence is not rigged. A lot of things happen that are not things that he initiates nor purposes to happen, but when they happen, he intervenes with divine wisdom and causes things to work out, work towards his direction. It says here that it's from the mouth of God that woe and well-being both proceed, and I think it's important to keep in mind that the God who, who runs this place, the God who created it, the God who is in ultimate moral charge of it, moral keeping of it, he does reward good and he does punish evil. He's not neutral. He's not a yin and yang God. Things are not equally balanced and balances the, uh, the whole pattern here. No, this is a temporary, the sin experience is a temporary experience that we're all uh, plugged into and it will not endure. It will not be the thing 5,000, 10,000, 15,000 years from now. We'll be in a, a universe where we all have free will, but none of us are choosing to sin. So there are really wonderful days not far at all ahead of us. But, but we are not in a situation where it's just neutral and God and the devil are kind of perpetually matched. Satan is totally outmatched by God. But God also has self-limitation. And so he's allowing the devil to kind of hang himself on his own rope, as I've mentioned before. Uh, and in the end, we will all see, the whole universe will see. Uh, that doesn't work out too well. It cannot possibly work when you have free beings that you have uh, selfishness at the core of everything and that, that cannot possibly work. Finally at verse 37 it reminded us that we really don't have any any basis for complaining when we're punished for our sins. How could we complain about that? You know when when wrongdoing is rewarded by uh, punishment, how could we really complain about that? So God is in ultimate charge, he's in ultimate control. He allows a lot of things to happen, to show what they're made out of, to show where the fruit of it goes, but ultimately he's going to bring things all together into a, a beautiful finished universe where sin will never rise up again because there won't be one intelligent person left who will say, hey, let's try that again. That was really awful the first time. Let's see if we can make it worse. There won't be anybody taking that line. What lesson might we draw from this? Hey, we live in a moral space. All people are kept accountable. And it's in this space that we all encounter Jesus. Jesus, who died on the cross to give us a gift of eternal life. I mean, the, the opportunities that are before us are beautiful and remarkable and will be totally fulfilling to you in your innermost being. God loves you and wants you in his kingdom. He's got a beautiful plan. Let's pray and give thanks for that. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for uh, creating this, this opportunity to exist forever, opportunity to learn what unselfishness is, and an opportunity, Lord, to come to the foot of the cross and accept Jesus. Bless each one, I pray. Help them to have a wonderful day serving you. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, with that broad perspective in mind of the way everything fits together, I think this is going to be a really good day for you. May God be your guide today.